All right, guys, good morning. It's Florida Keys Life. I'm Jason. If you haven't been here before, and today I'm not in the Florida Keys, as you might notice, I'm in Hartsville, South Carolina at the Stingray Factory. So, as you know, I bought my boat based just on merits and the layout of the boat. You can see my performance video and the, the layout boat of the layout review of the boat. Uh, but I'm so impressed with the boat. I actually came all the way here. Uh, we're on vacation in the area, but to learn more about the factory because there's something more to this Stingray boat and their efficiency. So come along, I'll take you inside, give a tour. Three, two, one. Welcome to Florida Keys Life. All right, before we get into the nitty gritty of the specifics of how they build a Stingray boat here, I'm gonna introduce you to the cast of characters that give me the tool. Okay, I'm here with Bob right now. What's your last name again, Bob? Van Volenhoven. He, he's the Vice President of Marketing and Sales. Okay, I'm here with Jeff Carawan. He does, what's your title? Director of R&D, Research and Development. Drew Gant, um, Director of Engineering at Stingray Boats. Yeah, bro, you've been here a long time. 26 years. 26 years. I'm Mitchell, um, Lamination Director. Okay, Stingray has a long and expansive history, over 40 years now, but that's not what we're going to focus on here. But it's interesting to note that when I sat down with the CEO, Barry Avent, and his staff, they told an interesting story about the history behind the Z-Plane hold and how the uh, founders, to include uh, Al Fink, uh, would take early boats initially on and essentially glue strips of strakes to holes and then do a bunch of testing on the lake. And through that extensive testing the old school way uh, eventually they came to the z-plane design which is very interesting way to go about it but that's how it was developed prior to CAD and all that different stuff now as we look at this CAD animation you see the genius of the z-plane hull the colored water is the disturbed water and you can see as the hull goes through the water at different speeds how there's no disturbed water gets back to the props and that's the genius behind the Z-Plane hull. Instead of driving on gravel, you're driving on pavement and you get good traction. And that's the efficiency you see in real life, how I've proven to you in my previous performance videos. As further demonstrated here, you can see how strakes that are positively displaced off of the hull cause a disturbance in the water. And it's also, to a certain extent, stepped holes. I know that's the big thing these days with most boats is to go with a stepped hole, but you're, you're putting air bubbles in front of your props by doing so. So I'm no significant engineer, I just know the Z-Plane system works. Alright, I'm standing here in front of the 253cc hole plug right here and I've got, who do I got with me here? Drew Gant, um, Director of Engineering at Stingray Boats. Okay, Director of Engineering. So he's the guy, he's got a fishing background, offshore fishing, all kinds of stuff, way better at it than I am, but he's the guy that puts it into practicality and how to make sure it works. So we've got the 253 CC hole plug, so in here you can see. So talk to me about the Z-Plane hole setup. So you can actually see, granted there's dust on this, so it's gonna be, be pretty easy to see. So this is the hole plug, so it looks just like the running surface off the actual hole that you'll see that you purchased, but you can actually see the Z. So each running plane has its own degree of dead rise all the way from the transom all the way forward. And then our lifting strakes aren't slapped onto the hull like a lot of people do. They're actually built into the running surface. So what ends up happening is you get almost a zero bubble effect after the keel um, go, cuts through the water up front and to the back. So it's highly efficient with zero bubble trail, kind of the opposite of what you'd expect from a step hole boat that we kind of compete against. There's no bubble trails running through the back. So that's how we get our fuel efficiency and our speed and our turning. What I've, I've mentioned this before, but just to drive that theory home, what mm -hmm. I kind of liken that to is the difference between driving on a gravel road mm -hmm. versus driving on pavement. Correct. Prop can mm -hmm. grab the water when there's no 
when there's no air in it. No when there is air in it, like a stepped hole, you're driving on gravel, so you need a whole bunch of horsepower to push you. Mm -hmm. But these holes are known for needing less horsepower to push them to, push them to similar performance numbers of other size boats. Okay, now we're going to talk about the second most substantial portion of the Stingray hull is that they vacuum infuse their hulls, at least on the 273cc R boat. Now this is courtesy of a different boat manufacturer. They didn't have one in process while I was there touring the boat. But Mitchell is going to explain a little bit further about why the vacuum infusion portion is a little bit better process in building a fiberglass boat hull. Yeah, so tell me why vacuum infusion is better than hand laminating a hull. Oh, simply put, you get a 50 to 50 ratio between glass and resin, so it should be a lot stronger because resin at the end of the day is just, it's just brittle plastic. And when you have a 50 50 glass to resin ratio, you're getting everything symmetric. It's more symmetric. As exactly. strong as it could be? As strong as it can be. Okay. Without being too much glass or too much resin. So when you do that by hand, does that ratio get off sometimes? So when you're doing it by hand, <laughs> most of the time you're trying to aim for like a 30 to 40 percent. That's normally the range you want to get into. And that's 40 is like most of the time it might be too dry. And 40 percent glass mat to 40 percent glass 60 to resin. resin. Yeah, so okay. 40, 40 glass, 60 resin. Okay. So normally in that area, you're going to deal with more air and Glass is not going to want to roll out as, as nice. So you're kind of trying to stay in between there. And if you get below 30, but you're getting too much resin. And like I said earlier, resin is brittle. So it's more prone to defects. And so this is the lift system you're talking about that limits the size? Yes, yeah, so this is what, as far as I know, nobody else in the world does nobody it like this. Wow. So mold repairs all the way at the end. Gel coat spray booth is here. All of our layup areas are down this way. We do infusion on the far end, but unfortunately we're not doing a boat today. Okay. Um, you see the yellow and blue booms, there's three booms that go down the wall. Every other boat that's not infused gets built out of one of those eight bays that are right there. Decks and holes usually go in together side by side, which you can kind of start seeing there. What happens with the ceiling is that since everything's hung from the ceiling, we can change the floor paper out almost weekly and keep the floor and everything super clean. but by hanging everything from the ceiling, one person can move a mold. Oh, wow, look at that. So, instead of having to have a team and a fork truck of moving something, one person can move a mold. And if you look down that way, everything in the ceiling is pneumatically actuated. So you see the one beam that's, that's pushed over towards the left up top right uh -huh. there? So it's set up to push a boat straight into the gel coat booth right there. So wow. there's little pneumatic rams in about every bay that open and close. There's a couple more open and close down there that you see right above us. So it slides left and right. The building's a little offset, so you've got a little bit longer length over there, a little bit shorter length over here. But it, we can move multiple things at the same time without fork trucks and with the minimal amount of people. So just to put this into practicality, real world, what this does, it may be a contributing factor is why I got such a good deal on my boat and why it makes Some us very efficient. Some are priced less than other boats, even though they perform better and have better options than many boats because of their efficient manufacturing process. I kind of think Henry Ford would probably be proud <laughs> uh, looking at all this machinery just to make things more efficient. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, we do a lot of stuff. The flip side of that, from an employee standpoint, you don't have people on rollers pushing things. You don't get the back issues. You don't oh. get the strains mm -hmm. and the stress. Mm -hmm. uh, on our on our teammates, on our personnel. Yeah, so mm -hmm. since you brought that up, what I understand, the employee appreciation day is because of no injuries or something? No recordables for a year. No recordable injuries for a year. For a year. For a boat builder. I, I, but every single one of these molds was built by us and framed by us. So it's, it's just how we become efficient. We do a lot of our own processes that a lot of people have to pay for and it saves us money and ends up translating into a lesser expensive product. I've been telling you guys there's something about Stingray. I've been, I've been, it's been hard for me to discover, but <laughs> I'll try to let you in on the secret. Obviously these two have already been pulled, but um, all the flotation foam gets put in here and then the weights, like I told you, and it gets lifted up, sat on a dolly and pushed through the door. So for us, once it comes through, the deck will go on the left side, hull will go on the right side, 
and this is our grinding room so they'll cut the flange off from the mold and then we've got some pre-made splashes and jigs for like cutting the transom holes There's not a deck in here we can look at this deck they just did this deck so all the hole cutouts were already predetermined for based off the options list on the boat so once it comes out of the grinding room all the holes are already cut for assembly and once it gets pushed out of here in the patch, and if there's any imperfections from where it came out of the mold, patch will fix it before it goes into assembly. This entire area is our small parts department, theoretically. Yeah. So they spray their own molds, which are some molds behind you. These, These must are, be live wells? Correct, live right wells on the back of the deck boats here. Like the console for the 25 is actually that console there. Oh, wow. Um, a live well for the front of the smaller center consoles over there with the foam pouring wrapped around it. One of the things in my last video where I talked mm -hmm. about the hull speed and hull efficiencies and compared it to other boats, mm -hmm. I found that this boat was heavier than most other boats, mm -hmm. but yet performed better. What are, what are some of the things that makes that boat heavier than other boats? It's just the way we lay it up. Um, on your boat with the 27 with the vacuum infusion, we actually had a company come in and spec the hull laminate for the infusion so we're putting all the laminate in there they spec'd out for pretty much more than what it takes to build the boat but we're trying to overbuild it all my experience offshore i know what breaks i end up seeing what breaks so we built it past that point so that's what makes us a little bit heavier is because we're putting extra stuff in places where some people take it out to save money yeah so being this is our this boat the 27 is really our first entry into an offshore boat we didn't want to put a whole bunch of boats out there and then run into issues. So we're trying to overbuild everything we possibly could. Yeah. So, And to remind you, despite it being heavier than all the other boats I compared it to, Sea Hunt, Sportsman, and Tidewater at least, it still performed better. Still got better fuel efficiency at almost <laughs> every speed range uh, that we found. Mm -hmm. And that's just due to the Z-Plane. <laughs> so is it safe to say that aside from the hardware, like everything is made here just about the only thing we really don't do is welded pipe structures but most all all of our bimini's but one are built in-house uh all of our canvas but a, a few things are built in-house and then all of our upholstery is done in-house by us That's okay we're looking at a 273 so it's also the 25 t-top as well so we're okay, using we're the same hard top on both boats the 25 and the, the 273 hard top now where is the option for the stand through tower? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Yeah. Actually, I think you'd have to stand through up here. Yeah, that, we, that's my next possible modification. That's where we differ a little bit from the more the family side than the straight fishing side. So this is infused both pieces and bonded together. You can kind of see the laminate schedule in oh, here. Yeah. So there's some core in there, some putty, there's some Endurabond and the laminate schedule you can see in there. So that's some thick stuff right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why this top is, I mean, when you put the rear supports on this top, mm -hmm. it, you're not ever, ever going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. And then if you wanted outriggers, this is the yeah, mount for outriggers. Nice. And we leave a little tick mark in the top side for you to cut your... Oh, for it centered? So centered center in the tick mark. Yep. About any size of Fit, Taco, Gym Lux. We, we sell Gym Lux through us, um, but any size I've tested it fits. So... That one will be for a 23, the new sport boat. Okay. That's the stringer for that boat. That's the stringer. And there, is there wood core in there at all? It's all composite on that one. All so, composite. Mm -hmm. How about the 273 and the 253? 273, 253 are all composite as well. Okay. Uh, the 23 was our next model that we did trying to not do anything with wood. So the 23 and the 25 and up are all 100% composite. So. These all have shipping destinations that are back, that are wrapped. Yes, yeah, sir. This one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's going to New York. That's probably with the New York load. And then we've actually got some boats going to Mexico up front. Mexico? Mm -hmm. wow. Every boat that leaves this plant goes with a product called TransShield to cover it. Okay. They're custom made covers to help with the journey from South Carolina to its destination. Mm -hmm. And it protects that hull. As you can see, it goes all the way to the bottom. It's, it's really helped us with making sure the loads arrived the way they're that's supposed. the white plastic that's stuff we're seeing plastic. okay gotcha so the last room we've got in here is all of our cnc and machines and water jet ah okay how we cut all those raw products so we're getting that high tech around here a little bit
We've got a pretty big water jet and they're actually cutting some of that new blue vinyl that we just showed you a second ago. So she cut can- that with a water jet. Or can we cut all of our vinyl um, and a lot of, some of our core material, we've kind of transitioned some of our core material to cut it on the actual CNC. That way we don't have to wait for it to dry out before it gets put in anywhere. But she's cutting out pre-made patterns that we've got on the computer that are nested. So you, you can walk up here. We're going to video a little bit, sorry. Oh, <laughs> so she's cutting bands out that have predetermined little tick marks and uh, notches for making bands on some of the upholstery. Just to help our sewing ladies know where to start on how to sew it into the actual seat cushion itself. So it's, it's pretty accurate and you can cut a multitude of layers at a time. Nice. So, versus somebody sitting and cutting by hand. Now what's your name, ma'am? Deborah Arthur. Deborah, mm -hmm. have you been here a long time? 126 years. 26 years. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Well, congratulations. You must Thank like you. it here. Yeah, yeah, it has been my job. <laughs> yeah. um, once it's cut out, so all the holes and the patterns are predetermined on CAD software over in my office. That's what makes everything line up. <laughs> so once the stuff comes out of there, it ends up looking like this. So there's a bunch of different styles of cutting that we do. Um, some of it gets compacted in, but we're building different things. So it'll get put over here and on the table, we've got a pretty much a router underneath and it'll pop through where it wants to pop through and cut out the predetermined areas. Smaller parts like to fly off the table. So we leave like a little onion skin so it doesn't come apart. And then we cut it apart separately after the fact. Okay. So you can see there's a couple countertops that they just edged. And then there's a, a pile of lids and stuff that they're trying to get um, over to the shelf to where they could pick it for a boat over there. This is just a start of what all the components we build ourselves. So a lot of manufacturers have, have to buy things like this and we build everything ourselves. So. So that storage box that's in the back of the, the center console above the live wells in my 273. You we built we that? that ourselves. So, so this box, I got to talk, talk to you about the thought process on it because it took me a while to figure it out. <laughs> what did you plan to put in there? Honestly, I like your idea. <laughs> okay. I, I left it as a glove box, but I like your tackle box. I already wrote yeah. down what size you put in there. So. I, I got like 60% of all my tackle right <laughs> there. And, and I, I got a whole bunch of those boxes so I can swap it out depending upon what kind of fishing I'm doing. Your boat's got like one of the uh, trash can pullouts. Yep, yep. I like love that we use that every every time we go out. This one's for a two thirty one, but it's the same similar setup as your boat. So, yeah. not all the manufacturers think about trash. That's uh, that's an important thing. That's one thing that we have been copied on a lot is a trash can holder. What do you call this material that I, I called it Corian for these accents, but I don't know what it is. What it's you... it's Novanite is what we call it. Um, there's a bunch of different manufacturers that make it, but it's Novanite. It's it's certainly a nice feature that yeah it dresses up a lot of areas mm -hmm. so you can see them like the dash panels I, we're making some acrylic dash panels now but that's in a door another piece of countertop but he's cutting pipes to build a bimini right now so you see the bimini frames that he's bent in the back so this is our sewing department so all the ladies on this side are sewing all the uh, canvas and like eyes and glass pieces and different things like that and then the next table over they only do upholstery give you a snippet this is a new upholstery for next year it's a new wow. blue and a new white i like it this is not yeah. my grandmother's <laughs> no. what's what's going on here so we have had a lot of equipment over the years and we've only kept what works they are a little bit old but they work and you can see behind the ladies all of our different patterns and stuff on the wall so I couldn't put a number on how many different patterns we have total between all of our upholstery and all of our canvas, but we have a lot. Everything is made by either Rob or I, upholstery wise or canvas wise. Just one of the many things that we make in house. So you can see some of the bimini tops that are finished hanging up on the wall. So all that's made right here. Yes, sir. Wow. The pipe works made just, just a few feet down where we went by earlier. All the canvas is done by these ladies. Okay, I'm here with Jeff Carawan. Okay, one thing that Jeff does here at Stingray is he builds all these hatch lids with this cool embossed or inlaid or what do you call that? Uh, inlaid. I In, call it. Inlaid Stingray emblem underneath all the hatches. That's one of the neat things that Stingray does that not a lot of manufacturers do inside of their hatch lids. And Jeff is the guy that makes that happen. 37 years. Yes, sir. 37 wow. years. That's one of the things I haven't mentioned. Stingray has a long family, is very family oriented. It is a very family oriented boat company. In fact, I think I'm supposed to be out of here by two o'clock today for some employee appreciation thing. So 
-huh. Super cool company to deal with. Yeah. Not a big corporate outfit with uh, no names. Yes, sir. So, very anyways. much a family-oriented thing, and you're very welcome to stay with us and go out to the lake and try some other boats. Well, I might do that, but my family's sitting in Charleston oh, waiting okay. for me today. Yeah. So Okay. All right. I appreciate that, though. All right. It's the first one we've done out of Black Cherry, and everybody was kind of... <laughs> Yeah, on the where, center console where side. Where is that going? New Jersey. And with that invitation to their employee appreciation day, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. As you can see, I've learned that Stingray, though, is a sizable boat builder. It's not a huge corporate company. Uh, they have a perfect mix of uh, automation along with hand custom building of these boats and uh, really a family-oriented company. Really good business, a uh, good company to do business with. I, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't know this when I bought my boat, but I'm really, I'm really happy to support uh, the Stingray Boat Works. Now, obviously, I'm not paid by Stingray. They didn't pay me to do this video. I'm just giving my honest review, reviewing their company to see how they do things. Uh, and to close it out also with this beautiful black cherry 253 cc i mean if i ordered a new one i might have to go with that color it's a that's a great looking color so i appreciate you watching the video uh, please like and subscribe and have a great day